Jesus said in John chapter three, you must be born again. He said that which is born of the spirit is spirit and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And we know what being born of the flesh is, but what is being born of the spirit? Your spirit has to be quickened and brought to life. In John 1.12, it says, as many as receive him, he gives the right to become a child of God to those who call on his name. It is true that when we receive Christ, when we invite him in, that he comes into our lives and causes us to be born again, regenerates our spirit, brings it back to life. But what kind of things change when we are born again? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. What a great promise that at the moment you are born again, the moment you receive Christ, you become a new creation. Your spirit is brought to life. Now you still have the old sin nature, but you also have the spirit of God prompting your spirit to do the things God wants you to do. So there is a struggle that takes place inside of us. So what changes in this new creation? We know that old things pass away, and we know that that's not just sinful things, which is really good for us to know. We have a fresh new start, but also the things that we might've bragged about in the past, the things that we leaned on. We put away all of those things and put our trust in Christ. So what kind of things do change when we give our lives to Christ? Number one, we are no longer to live for ourselves. Your life is not to be lived for you, but it is now to be lived for Christ. It says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So now I'm living my life for Christ, no longer for Robert Furrow, but now for what God wants me to do as I surrender myself to his will and direction. The second thing that happens is that we are reconciled to God. Where sin separates you from God, now all of that is taken out of the way and we can go boldly before the throne of God. We have a heavenly Father who loves us that we can call on. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven. He went on to say, give us this day our daily bread, which means that we can have a daily conversation. This is not a magic prayer you say over and over again. It's a conversation that you have with your heavenly Father. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. When we are born again, not only are we reconciled to God and now have a relationship with him, but we also plant seeds and water seeds for the gospel of Jesus Christ to cause other people to be transformed. And God gives the increase. Something else that changes is that God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for my life. And when we become Christians, we want to know what is God's plan. We want to hear that well done, good and faithful servant. We want to not live our lives for ourselves, but live our lives for God and discover the plan that he has for us. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God prepared these works beforehand for us to walk in them, to do the things that God called us to do. We are ambassadors for Christ, the Bible says. What a privilege to be a representative of our heavenly Father here on this earth, shining as lights, being a city that is set on a hill, looking for God to do the work inside of us he has called us to do, and may we walk in that. The Bible also tells us that if we are in Christ, there is no condemnation. What an amazing thing that our sins have been forgiven. And even if we sin now, we can go to him and confess it, ask him to forgive us. And the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You may feel like you are condemned before you come to Christ, you are. You're condemned and under the wrath of God. But once you come to Jesus now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So that Jesus died for us so that we are no longer condemned. And even if we sin as a Christian, we find the great forgiveness that comes in Christ. One of the great changes that takes place when we come to Christ is that our spirit is brought to life. When Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God said in that day they died. Now physically they were going to die, but on that day they died spiritually. And so was everyone who was born after that. We are born with a dormant spirit and our spirit must be brought to life. In John 3, 5 through 6, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And so your spirit has to be quickened to life. Jesus said in John chapter 4 that the time was coming when men would worship him in spirit and in truth. So if your spirit isn't brought to life, then you can't worship him. God is spirit. We have to have our spirits regenerated in order to have that relationship with him. Now, another thing that happens when we are born again is that we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The moment we are born again, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's because of the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And God causes the Spirit to live inside of us, where we are now the temple of the Spirit. And we are led by Him, and He is able to lead us and guide us into all righteousness, and to help us to know what the Scriptures say, and to bring them to our remembrance. Another thing that happens when we are born again is that we are given eternal life. And that's not just the length of days, it is the quality of life. The Bible says that in the presence of God is fullness of joy. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. He's the one who's done the work, and it's a free gift. If someone offers you a gift, all you have to do is receive it. You could not accept it, but you could receive it. And so God has offered you the gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus, and all you need to do is receive it. Another amazing truth about what happens to us when we are born again is that we become joint heirs with Christ. We have everything. Everything that Jesus has, we have. Galatians 4, 6 and 7 says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. And that is true of both male and female. It's simply saying you have been adopted by God as the firstborn son. You are heirs with Christ who is the firstborn son. And you have all things because of that. I hope that helps us to be content knowing that if we are in Christ, we have everything. Now I've saved the best for last and a couple more. Number one, God is working all things out for our good. When you and I love him, when you and I are committed to him, when you and I are born again, then whatever happens, it doesn't mean God causes it, but whatever happens, God uses together for our good. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so we've got God's purpose for our life, the plan that he has for us, the works that we have been created to walk in and that God causes all things to work together for the good. This doesn't mean no bad things will happen to us, but it does mean that when they do, God will cause them to work out for the good for us. And finally, when we are born again, we become a child of God. We talked earlier about being heirs, meaning that we inherit everything with him. There's nothing that we don't have. John 1, 12 and 13 says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. This means that we become that child of God. He oversees us, he loves us, like we love our children, God loves us. These things that happen to us when we are born again are amazing. Not only are they for here and now, but they are on into eternity. And may we stay close to that one who has loved us and called us and brings these changes when we commit our life to Christ. 
And if you've never given your life to Christ, then receive him now. Ask him to forgive you. Change your mind about living for yourself and make the decision to begin to live for God. That's repentance. And then invite him in and begin the new life that you have in Christ. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.